I am so very thankful to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for allowing me a few minutes to speak to you today on behalf of him and his great works and the reform of us, the black people here in the hells of North America. I was just speaking to a few of my sisters from the Detroit area. It gave me a lot of happiness to know that they had come such a long distance to hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I've also learned that we have sisters and brothers who have traveled all the way here from Los Angeles, California, San Francisco, as well as Boston, Massachusetts. So we have both East Coast and West Coast and all the states in between present today to hear a great man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. His greatness shows the shine of God and the reform that he is making in we who follow him. This indeed is a blessing to undergo a reform. You know, I don't want to go into the country because we have many ministers here who can teach on behalf of him and represent him in the scriptures. But it is my great pleasure to say all praises are due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the great work of reform that he is making with we, the black women who follow him. The black woman in the United States of America had a very bad reputation prior to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Sisters, you and I were considered nothing by the best of civilized societies. Items unmentioned. Someone not to have hold in high respect or high esteem. No matter how much education we try to get in the white man's world, and no matter how many degrees that we were able to obtain under his system of education, we were still looked down upon as being a second-rate or third-rate person, not one to be respected and honored by the best of civilization. And then they would allow us, a few of us, to be tokens to satisfy the whole. A few of us would be admitted into certain societies so that we would think that we have accomplished. But the love that should have been in us for our sister, who was less fortunate than ourselves, wasn't there. Because the strands of love and unity that should have existed between us were absent. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad tells us to go back and search our history here in the United States of America. Search our past and then look on our present condition. Sisters, you and I needed a reformer, someone to change us from the form we were in and put us in a form to be admired by the best of civilization. Don't you want your condition changed? Don't you want to have a happy life, life now while you live? I do. I went to Africa looking for a right leader, a leader that I could gain self-respect from. I went there and I studied in their library, searching for history. Everyone told me that my, my black history was good and I had a good black past. Well, where was it? I went to the Republic of the Sudan and stayed there two years, searching the library for some knowledge of myself that I could say not only that I was black and proud, but knew why, knew something more than just the color black being good. And I stayed there and I studied. And the first thing they told me when I came in there was that if I want to be respected as a decent person, I had to lengthen my garment. You know, we follow the styles and traditions of America, the white man's America, without thinking of our original selves. Here I had gone into the fashion magazines, you know, Vogue, Bazaar, Seventeen, all of the fashion magazines and selected my wardrobe to go to Africa. And when I got to Africa with those short garments and those sleeveless dresses, the women themselves told me if I want to be respected as a decent person, I had to lengthen my garment. I had to put sleeves in that garment. I said, what is this? This is the style of white America. Only I didn't say white. I said, this is 
the American style, this is my style. They said, no, that's not your style. They told me I could not be accepted in among them unless I lengthened my garment. We should not be fooled by white America's propaganda showing us short miniskirts made in African prints. No, don't be fooled by them. Search your own past. Search what is written on you. As I said, I went over there looking for a way. And they wouldn't even let me in until I lengthened my garments. All right, look what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad does for us when we come through that door. Can't wear a mini skirt in here, right? He's educating us. This is the first step of reform coming through this door. That you be admitted among the best of civilized societies, you must first have the appearance. And this is what he's doing to us today, shaping us, preparing us to meet with the best of civilized society. I mean civilized in the way that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stresses the word civilized. Hmm? Another thing, last week the Honorable Elijah Muhammad mentioned our name and the importance of having a good name, a name with meaning. My name used to be Christine Wilson. And when I was over there in Africa, you know, in the Republic of the Sudan, just like you're sitting separate here, women on this side and brothers on that side, well, their trains are also separated. The women ride in separate train compartments from the men. This all sounds strange to us because we've been brought up over here in America. But this is a wild place. You know, all the evils and wildness you can think of, you can see them right here in America, right? You can't even think of any evils that you don't see here in the street or any evil you can get into if you just want it to, right? But over there, there are preventive measures, and this is what we're undergoing here. So sitting in one of these train compartments with the women, you know, I, my Arabic at that time was a little better than it is now, a whole lot better, in fact. And so in order to converse with them, you had to speak Arabic. And in conversing with them, they uh, asked me, well, what is your name? And I told them my name was Christine Wilson. They said, oh, no, that's not your name. And they started laughing at me. And I asked them, why were they laughing? They said, where did you say you were from? I said, America. They said, oh, no, there are no black people in America. There's only white people over there. And I said, no, ma'am. I said, there's millions of us over there. They didn't believe this. And then they asked me again, what did you say your name was? I said, Christine Wilson. And they said, no, that's a white man's name. That is not your name. Tell us your real name. And here I didn't understand what they were saying then. But all praises are due to, the, to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He teaches us that we must have a good name, a name that represents ourselves. And he teaches us the knowledge of these names. You've heard the ministers, I'm sure, speak on it. Well, some of us are named Over, Overhill and Underbrush and Over, Oglesby and a whole lot of strange names without meaning. Names that identify other objects, tree. Toad, frog. Hmm? When we say those names, we think of a tree, we think of a frog, something like that. Those names don't have a meaning for our own characteristics. So we don't know the importance of a good name. And that's why we are here today to hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Oh, sisters, there's so many of us here. You, too, I'm sure, who could stand up and bear witness to the truth that you've heard from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You've seen something different, and this is what has attracted you here, like it attracted me. As I said, I went to Africa in search of knowledge. Then I went to Europe. And you know when I got to Europe, they were talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? They were talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I was right born here in America and didn't know a thing about him. We were attending a conference on race relations at Schiff, and the uh, devils were discussing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They said, well, he teaches that the white man is the devil. Now here there were professors, doctors, highly educated men in the world, and they were at this conference in Sweden. And so I was the black representative there, but that premise, the white man is the devil, I said to them, I said, let us first of all define devil. 
So these white people started defining devil. Evil, tricky, you know all the adjectives we know about the devil. So then I asked them, I said, do you know of a man or a group of people on the face of the planet Earth that can refute that, that, that means that can uh, say that that is an untruth? And you know, all these highly educated men could not deny that. They held their heads down. These white professors, these white doctors, these white lawyers, these highly educated white people could not prove that they were not the devil. And that's what really started me thinking. Now you and I are here in America, we don't hear white people say that they are not the devil. We hear the black people say white men aren't the devil. But we don't hear they, them say it, do we? So we should start thinking over these things. And when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad comes before you, give him your fullest attention. Oh, every one of us in here, we can bear witness to his greatness. Because he is reforming us. He is taking us out of the form that white America put us in, black sister. And everywhere we go, dress the way he teaches us to dress. And acting the way he teaches us to act. People bow down in recognition for us. We get plate, the seats on the airplane much quicker than some of you. And we look totally unlike them. And, uh, unlike them. And they know that we believe that they are the devil. But still they give us high respect. And this is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wants to do for every one of us, not just a few, every one of us. He wants to raise you up to a place where you can be respected by the best of civilized society. Don't say it's too late for you. It's not too late. If it was too late, he would not be here today. But he is here today to change us, put us in a form that we can be respected by the best of civilized society. Sisters, the door is open for you to come in and undergo a change. And you too, brother. The door is wide open. He makes new people out of us. He gives us not just more than a hope. He shows us a way, a way in which if we follow it, we will be successful. Look at the businesses that he has opened for us today. Beautiful businesses, employment, changing the way of life for us. Look at the building that we are in. This building costs four million dollars and you are welcome to sit in it. Now, when before have we ever sat in a building that cost $4 million and we own it? Huh? He says, we, you as well as us. Huh? Because we are one. This is the beauty of Islam. We're a unit. We're one. And this oneness is because he is teaching us love among one another. Sisters, don't let this opportunity leave you. When he comes here, listen to every word that he says with an open mind, open ears, open your eyes and behold this man. He's been teaching here in North America for over 40 years. And every year you see more success, right? Yes, you do. He's not here to make your pleasure less. No, he's to show us how to have true pleasure, true happiness, a better way of life. You don't see the Muslim sisters walking around sad, do you? Do you? Do you see the brothers walking around sad? If you do, then I like to see that one that you see. Because I see sisters that are standing up now, knowing why they're proud. I see sisters standing up and walking and holding themselves in a respectful way. He changes your way of life. He makes you more beautiful. Black and beautiful? Well, he teaches you the root of black, the meaning of being beautiful. And sisters, this is for us today. He will make all things new. As the Messenger of Allah has pointed out to us in the scriptures there in the book of John. I believe, right? That's Brother Minister. The book of John there. The Jesus says, when he comes, he will make all things new. Well, this is speaking of a people, too. You know, we've read the scriptures and we've heard about or, or been taught about the type of people that will be admitted into a hereafter, a better way of life, right? 
We've heard it all of our lives. We've heard the Baptist preachers, all the Christian preachers talk about a life, a better life than this. And we were told to suffer in this life. But later we would be admitted into a better life after we're dead. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad makes true the scriptures. Jesus said that there would be one to come after him. And when he comes, he would guide you into all truth. Truth. This is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is giving to us today. Truth. You do not hear white men stand up and say he's telling other than the truth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has offered $10,000 to any man who could prove that he was teaching other than truth. Now, don't you know that's a lot of money for someone who wanted just to have some money? Huh? Any of you who don't believe him, try to find one aspect of what he is teaching to be other than truth. And he will give you $10,000. And he also said his life. Now, brother and sister, you have never heard of a man put up a pledge like that before. If he is telling you one thing other than truth, he said, just come forth or write it. Why don't you publicize it? Yeah. Bring it forth to him so you can get that $10,000. Now, for 40 years he's been teaching and in his 40 years of words and work, you can't find something he's saying other than truth? That should tell us a whole lot right there. So when he comes forth, let us give him our utmost attention. Let us listen to that which he says. And those of you who want to study, read what he writes. Look back in those old Muhammad Speak newspapers. Pick up that book, Message to the Black Man. That's a message for you and I. Don't turn your head the other way. Listen to this man. You've heard of how the evil world will be destroyed. We've seen the scripture of the past. And don't say it's falsehood. If it was falsehood, why has it been carried to this day? If it was false that Moses lived 4,000 years ago, and that he brought a people out of Egypt land, then why have people been reading that and quoting that for 4,000 years and believing in it? Hmm? If it was false that Moses existed, and that he got the people across the Red Sea, and that Pharaoh and his armies were drowned and killed. That is a lesson for us today. The messenger of Allah says, look back on history and take a lesson for yourselves. Read what was written. Moses came with a message for the people, right? And when Moses came with this message, he told them to believe and follow me, and I will take you out of bondage and bring you into freedom. This is what he told those people, and you can find the Jews today following the laws of Moses and still have more money among them than we have among us. They rule America practically, right? Every community of black people, you find the Jews making more and more money. They're following the dictates that Moses gave to them to make them successful. Look at the history of the prophet, Noah. The messenger said these are lessons for us. Let us look back at that and read it. Now here we have Elijah Muhammad. We refer to him as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because his works demand honor. His presence demands honor. And we want you to honor him today. Give him your utmost attention. The scriptures even state his name, that the last one among you will be named Elijah. The book of Malachi. Sisters, you've read the scripture, and if you haven't, go back and read it. His name is spelled E-L-I-J-A-H, right there for us in the Bible, that he would be the last one to come. It is there for a purpose. How could we identify the last one if we don't know his name and his actions and his work? So it is there for us. Let us read it. Let us give our utmost attention to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad when he comes before you. Thank you, sisters and brothers, for these few words. I'd like to greet you now in our greetings of peace of the Arabic language, which is the original language of the black man, so it teaches the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, with the words, I salam alaykum.
All praises be to Allah. Let's just put the captain a, a big hand, another hand on that. All praises be to Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters, let us all stand, please. This one now facing the direction of the east. Spread forth your hand in this manner. Bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat the prayer after me, but repeat it in silence. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful here in the wilderness of North America, and make the followers of Muhammad successful too, as thou didst make Abraham successful and the followers of Abraham successful. Surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham and the followers of Abraham, surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Wallace Farad Muhammad, and I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last divine apostle. Amen. Let everyone please be seated. My beloved brothers and sisters, I just left the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Messenger Elijah Muhammad feels good, and he said he want to be here at 2 o'clock sharp. Think over that. All praises due to Allah. We thank those of you who travel from all over the hells of North America to, to be with us today. Those of you who travel from the East Coast, all along the Eastern Seaboard, from along the Canadian borders over to the West Coast, we thank you. Those of you who travel from the North to the Deep South, down near the Florida Keys, over to the Texas Panhandle, from the Texas Panhandle to the Gulf of Mexico. We thank you for traveling to see and hear this great man. I don't blame you. I would too. I would be here every Sunday. If I was on the other side of the planet, knowing that Mr. Muhammad was speaking here on this side of the planet, I would sacrifice everything I have to see and hear God's last messenger. Because if... Because if there is a man from God in our midst in this day and time, I want to know what did God tell this man. Do you understand? All praise is due to Allah. They say curiosity killed the cat. Think over that. But curiosity this day and time, those who are curious and seeking the truth and the wonders and wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it won't, don't kill the cat, it raised the dead. Do you understand? All praise is due to Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters, we thank Allah for giving us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Messenger Elijah Muhammad is mentioned in every scripture or book or Bible that you read. It's talking of nobody but God and his last messenger in this day and time. There in the Psalms, the 40 Psalms in the 7th verse, it reads like this. It said, Behold, I come in the volumes of the books, for it is written of me, not written of the Jesus of 2,000 years ago, but it's written of the last Jesus in this day and time. It is written of the one that the Jesus predicted would come in this day and time. Not the Jesus of 2,000 years ago. And we bear witness that the one that the Jesus predicted to come is going to have a miss today in person of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All praise be to Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters, I won't prolong the time. We have some ministers with us today who travel far and near. Make our call on Brother Minister John B. from Buffalo, New York. Give him your undivided attention. They'll bring him before you. In his way. Assalamu alaikum. In the most holy name of Allah, the all wise, 
true and the living God who came to us in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. We thank Allah and we can never thank him enough. If we prayed all day and prayed all night, we couldn't give him enough praise for blessing us with a divine leader, teacher, and guide who is the lamb without a spot or blemish. Our beloved leader and teacher, the most humble and honorable Elijah Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, I thank the honorable Elijah Muhammad for this opportunity to stand before you to say just a few words. Not to try and teach you something, but to bear witness of the great teacher that's already in our midst. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have a man in our midst that the Bible speaks of, where it said there that Elijah must come and restore all things. I am a witness bearer to that great Elijah that is already in our midst that has already restored the black man back to his rightful position, already put us in our place, but yet we stand out waiting to see if those that are already restored will fall back into the old hands of the devil again. But I'm here to tell you, but that spirit of truth, that comforter, that restorer, my beloved brothers and sisters, stands in our midst today, rejected by you, whom he has come to save. You and I have never had anything given to us. We have never been restored to anything because we have been in the hands of the devil. But now, the great restorer is on the scene. He is here, my beloved brothers and sisters, standing, asking each and every one of us to come to our own. Will you come? Or will you wait for another Elijah to come? If you are waiting for another Elijah to come, my beloved brothers and sisters, you'll never see him. Because Jesus told you what this one would be doing. He would bring you into all the truth. You and I have been looking for someone to bring us truth that would set us free. The followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stands as an example of the people that have been set free because we know the truth. We didn't get this truth from a prophet of 4,000 years ago. But we got this truth from a man in this day by the name of Elijah Muhammad. We got this truth from a man that has set us totally free. Not free on paper, not free on words, but free indeed. This was given to us by God's last messenger, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah for the honorable Elijah Muhammad. We bear witness that, as our minister said, he will be here in a few minutes. Only thing we can do is just wait on him because all of us want to see him. Because any time we as ministers say we travel around the world just to cast an eye or lend an ear to what God's messenger has to say. So I bear witness that God's messenger is in our midst today. And every one of you here, black man and black woman, you too should stand up and bear witness and reclaim your own as a follower of the most hum humble and humble Elijah Muhammad. I greet you in the name of Allah and His Holy Apostle, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. All oh, praise be to Allah. He's from uh, Buffalo, New York. We're going to leave the East Coast and travel all the way over to the West Coast. How about that? All oh, praise be to Allah. But bring before you another hard-hitting minister, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I bear witness to the Scripture. When the scripture Isaiah and the book of uh, Hebrew, it said, and his minister was a flame of fire. Think over that. See, a flame is that which comes from a fire, and the fire is out of Elijah Muhammad. He is the one who's killing the fire with his truth. And his ministers are flame who is shot from that fire, and when this flame reaches its destination, the flame itself starts another fire. Do you understand? I bring before you, Brother Minister Abdul Kareem from Muhammad's Temple, number 27, Los Angeles, California. Oh, thank you. Salaam alaikum. In the 
most holy name of Allah, the all-wise, the all-true and living God, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever. We thank Allah. We thank him forever and forever for visiting us here in the wilderness of North America and raising from among us a man that he himself made divine by pumping into a man divine wisdom that man becomes divine. Yes, sir. God met with this man. This man that you have come out to see today, he has actually met with the divine supreme being of the universe itself. Yes, this divine supreme being, being divine himself, has produced another divine being. That one was mission to bring us into the knowledge of truth. And I can only speak of one man in America that has that power. And that is the honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad. Sisters and brothers, we are very, very happy and honored to see so many beautiful black faces waiting here for the presence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. He is the only messenger yes. since the beginning of messengers that have the power to cultivate and refine a people. Yes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man that has for the last 40 years been cultivating and refining the very characteristic of the black man itself. Yes, out of all of the great prophets and reformers of the world, yes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the most successful. Yes, Never in history did a prophet find his people so morally low as we were. Never in history were their people found as ignorant of self yes, as we were. Yes, Never were there a people as deaf, as dumb, and as blind as we were. Yes, Never were there, were there a people in more need of love, compassion, and unity as we were. Yes, Never have there been a people who had nothing whatsoever to boast of as we have been. Yes, Never was there a people in a more greater need of a messenger and a reformer than you and I, the so-called American Negro. Yeah. But the people in need of a messenger and a reformer have been blessed. <laughs> never was a more, never was a people more blessed yeah. than me and you. <laughs> never was a people visited before by the person of God until this day. Yeah. And never could a people be more blessed to have been visited by the person of God to bring a message to a people such as the one that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad brings to you and I today, the divine wisdom from the divine God. He brings life to the dead. He is the refined himself, and he is also the refiner. He is the cultured man, and he is also the culturer. He is the supreme and the perfect example of all people. He is as it is written of him, the truthful, the trustful, the faithful, the seal, the beginning of messengers to the black man and the, in America and the end of the messengers to the black man. When you look at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you're looking at a man that has been made by God himself. He opens doors that no one else can open. He closes doors that no one else can close. No one, and we bear witness, had the power to unstop the deaf ears of the black man of America. No one had the power in America to open the blind eyes of the black man in America. No one had the power to unloose the nut from the tongue of the black man of America, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad have done, he is doing, and will continue to do as long as there's one black man in America deaf, dumb, and blind through the knowledge of himself. In Muhammad, what do you find? You find the combined virtues of every messenger. You find the combined virtues of every prophet. When you look at Muhammad, you see the manliness of Moses. 
When you look at Muhammad, you see the tender-heartedness of Aaron. When you look at Muhammad, you see the generalship of Joshua or Gideon. When you look at Muhammad, you see the patience of Job. When you look at Muhammad, you see the daring of David. When you look at Muhammad, you see the grandeur of Solomon. When you look at Muhammad, you see the simplicity of John, the strength of Samson, the sureness of Elijah the prophet, and the simplicity of Jesus. All praise to you, Allah. All praise to you, Allah. Yeah. When you look at Muhammad, you see a man whose light radiates from every direction. Whereas all of the messengers that were sent in the past had light, but their light radiated from one direction. But the light of Muhammad radiates from every direction that there is, and it reaches every black man, woman, and child. Wherever you may find them, at whatever level of education or non-education, the light of Muhammad will reach them. All oh, praise to you. While I am the Christian church, there used to be a song. Go, tell it to the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it to the mountain. Yes, we who follow the honor of Elijah Muhammad will tell it on the mountain. We will tell it on the hill. We will tell it from the rooftop, from the treetop. We will tell it from wherever we are, from whatever stands under whatever condition we are. We will tell it on the mountain that Muhammad is here. Oh, please, this is my life. All praise to Jesus Allah. All praise to Jesus Allah. Yes, this is our mission to tell it. It is our duty to tell it. It is our responsibility to tell it. And if we do not carry out our duties and our responsibility, then we become the victim of that duty and responsibility. So sisters and brothers, I, like you, await this great man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So without any further recourse, I'll call forth our beloved brother minister, Shai, as I greet you in the name of Allah and his last messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Salaam alaikum. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I know you feel good from the air of these ministers. Come all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. They said the West is the best, so we stay on the West for a little while. They used to call this part of the West Coast, the California, call it the Barbary Coast, back during frontier days. Down near uh, San, San, San Francisco. That's it, San Francisco. They said, well, the little cable cars travel almost to the stars. <laughs> but we bear with it, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad have a star there now. And the star shining bright. And he's hitting the heart and teaching righteous. I'm going to bring him before you, Brother Minister John Muhammad. Give you everybody a kiss. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the all wise God. The one God who came to us in the flesh and blood of Master Wallace Farad Muhammad. And we thank him for raising up among us our beloved brother, a messenger from among the dead that slept, the first begotten of the dead, among the black people of hell. We thank Allah who came to us as a man. And we thank his messenger for staying with the rebellious people, staying with us to teach us and guide us on the right path. We thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I greet you in their name once again with the greeting of peace and of paradise of Islam Alaikum. We're very happy to see those of you who are present today because we're going to hear the greatest the wisest and the boldest black man that every black man and woman that have longed for for 400 years. There have never been a time since time began that the black man needs someone like God's man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not an ordinary man, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man who was fashioned by God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man whom God spent three years and four months teaching. God taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as the Bible teaches us who was as blind as my messenger. 
but yet Allah saw him for a very long time. I salam alaikum. Sister Melvina Blunt, please report to the front door right away. Sister Melvina Blunt. Excuse us. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the man that all of us are looking to see today. We are waiting for his arrival. Why? Because he is the real Jesus of the past. Who is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Is he Moses of 4,000 years ago? No. Is he the Elijah of the past? No. Is he Job of the past? No. He is greater than Job of the past. He is greater than Moses of the past. He is greater than the Jesus of the past. He is the real Jesus, the real Moses, the real Elijah, coming to go for us. Praise the people of Allah. Praise the people of Allah. Praise the people of Allah. We, the black man of hell, have been longing for a man. We have never had a man. We have never had a righteous man. With the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he is the man, he is the messenger of God without a spot of blemish. We mourn for this day. Grandfather died. He couldn't see this day. Grandmother died. She couldn't see this day. But all today, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he is the first begotten of the dead. Among the dead that slept for 400 long years. Think of it. Black people, their God came to America. He left heaven and he came into hell. He stepped down into hell. As the way in the revelation it says that there was one God sitting on the throne. And as he was sitting on the throne, he weeped much because he couldn't find one worthy to take the book and loose the seven seals thereof. But another angel rising up saying, weep not. I find one in the valley of hell. I see him, don't we? He was born with the right material. He's born like every other man, but he is wiser than the ordinary man. The material that he was born with was a divine material. We've not. Everybody has forsaken this man. Everyone looked down on the man. Why? Because he was the little stone that the builders rejected. The builders didn't want the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The world didn't want the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The world stormed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stepped out from under the altar. And the book said he looked as though not that he was, but he looked as though he was slain. He was not slain, but he looked like he was slain. Because the world rejected him. But all today, the little lamb stands in the lion's mouth, making honey. And the whole world is upset. Why? Because a divine leader, a divine teacher, the boldest black man that ever lived, the wisest black man that ever lived, a man, a messenger of God. We used to think that the message of God was a spook. But we like better. Why? Because we were dead. And a dead man don't have no sense of responsibility. We have been dead for 400 years. But God reads up the other Elijah Muhammad. Taught him everything that he knows. He's not teaching the black man and women nothing of himself. But he's teaching you what God taught him. How do you know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is from God? Look at his word. What man do you know that can do what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is doing? You said Jesus raised the day. Elijah raised the day. But then what about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? He's causing a dumb, a rebellious, a stiff neck, a hard-headed people. He's causing us to come together. As in the book of Ezekiel, he said, causing the bones to come together. All of a sudden, the toe bone jumped up and connected with the foot bone. And the foot bone said, show feels good. Then the leg bone got together. 
and the firebomb got together. The black man of hell had never known the name of God. We call him a lily of the valley, a bright in the morning star. We call him everything, Jehovah. But the Bible said, by my right name, you have never known. His name was written up and down his thigh. What was his name? What is his name? Master Wallace Farad Muhammad. The greatest guy. The wisest guy. The boldest guy. Praise the Bishu Allah. Praise the Bishu Allah. And we are fortunate to have the wisest messenger that have ever lived. No one else. No, there ain't none beside him. There is none can take his place. Yes, he is independent of the people like God. God has made him such. He said, okay, come to me and I will teach you. So we are very fortunate. We are very honored to have you sitting here today because we realize that we are about to see the man that we prayed for for 400 years. We are very fortunate to be alive. You could have died. God spared your life. That you can sit here on study hour and hear the greatest leader, the wisest leader that have ever lived. So we want you to sit back and relax because we all are waiting for the arrival of the bold leader, the wise leader. He's like a magnet. He pulls the people to him. All the way from the west coast, he pulls the people to him. 3,000 miles we traveled to see the real Jesus. We went to church across the street yesterday, but to see the real Jesus, we traveled 3,000 miles. Why? Because God fashioned him so that he loved every black man and woman. We are very fortunate and we are honored to be sitting here just to see and to hear the great leader, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at this time. I give way and bring back to you our beloved brother, Minister Yusuf Shah, as I say, Salaam Alaikum. Our praise is to Allah. Our praise is to Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters, I know you enjoyed Brother Minister, did you? <laughs> Brother Minister John Muhammad from the Barbary Coast, uh, San Francisco, California. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, I'm going to bring before you another minister. Brother Minister Kareem from Hartford, Connecticut. From Hartford, Connecticut. I, I beg your pardon. Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the all-wise, true, and the living God, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom be praise and glory forever, and in the name of his humble servant and apostle, our leader, teacher, and perfect guide, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad, I say unto you again, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Giving honor to our Minister Yusuf Shah, to the labors at number two, and to our beloved brothers and sisters, I am honored to stand before you in Muhammad's temple, bearing witness to the fact that no more is Islam in the back alley. We have left the alley and come out on the main thoroughfare to see a man whose presence in America is like a magnet. We bear witness to that since we have journeyed from all over America, north, south, east, and west, just to see him, just to hear a word out of the mouth of such a fine man as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I remember in the scripture, John sent a word to Jesus asking, are you the one or shall we look for another? And Jesus sent word to John, tell him the blind see. Tell him the deaf hear. Tell him the dumb speak. Tell him the lame walk. Tell him the dead are raised. And I bear witness today the blind are seeing. The dead are being raised. The 
the dumb are speaking, the lame are walking due to the presence of the messenger of God, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You who come here to Chicago to hear Muhammad have marveled at the white man's world. You have looked at the skyscrapers and the highways and the bridges and the jets and the rockets and marvel at the greatness of the white world. But the Holy Quran refers to the world of the wicked as being like a spider's web. Now the spider spins a strong web in relativity. It is strong in relativity. And if you don't think it's strong, ask the fly who get caught in the spider's web. But that spider's web, though beautiful and though relatively strong, is nothing so that you can move it with your hand. A strong wind will blow it away. But it's strong in relativity, based on the knowledge and nature of the spider. So the white man's world is strong as he could make it. It is as beautiful as he could make it, but it is so fragile that the messenger of God's handiwork moves it away like it was nothing. So that the wind... The wind of time is just blowing it aside so that many of you who a few years ago would not have Muhammad, today you must bow in submission, bearing witness he's the wisest. You have come through the wade-ins and the walk-ins and the sit-ins and the creep-ins and the crawl-ins. You came through the marches and the demonstrations. You came through the riots. You came through the days of black power that you didn't know what black power really was. You tried every route and you tried every leader. You went to the church. You went to the NAACP, you went to court, you went to the Urban League, you tried the Masonic Order, and nothing solved your problem. <laughs> Some said, we need education. So you went to the white university, and the teaching of Muhammad was there that you must have knowledge of self. So then you said, we must go back to Africa to get some knowledge. And up jump black studies programs. Every college has a black studies program. Or an Afro-American society. And you have come to know that they will not solve your problem. Now where must you look? The NAACP as a power has died. CORE has died. The Urban League has died. The black power movement has died. The uh, Afro-American societies on the campus are dying. They are very weak. They are dying. And the only ones that are not dying are those who are latching on to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. You don't have to travel east in quest of light today. The light is here in the presence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we say to you, let us understand, if the book says Elijah must come to restore all things, and the Christians say Christ must come, and the Jews say the Messiah must come, and the Arabs say the Mahdi must come, and the Persians say God as Arab Mazda must come, this bears witness that every people are looking for someone to come. But they're looking for him to come to them. The Jews leave a chair vacant at the feast of the Passover for Elijah, who they say is the one who will reveal the Messiah. Well, the Elijah, who they say is the one who will reveal the Messiah. Well, then you don't have to look to the Jew. Elijah is here. In the person of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who we expect shortly. We expect him to be walking through the door momentarily. A man in fulfillment of divine prophecy. We never expected that we would be part of a prophecy. Here's a little black man and woman not owning one square inch of territory anywhere. Called a nigger, negro, and a colored person. 
looked down upon by everyone. And today we've got a man who's lifting us up on his back. Yet he says to us, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, it was not myself who brought you here. It was not Minister Shaw who brought you here. But you heard the words about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when the brothers in your city said, come, let's go see this man, you said, I'm ready. Some came by bus. Some came by plane. Some would have come on the train, and I know some would have walked if they had to walk across America to see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you're right. I don't know who else you could wait for. What else must he do? You didn't know yourself. He made you love black. You didn't know the enemy. He taught you that was the devil. You didn't know what time it was and he woke us all up. You wanted to know what direction shall I go in. And after he taught us who we were, that the black man is the original man. Don't you know that's heavy? That black is the original? That's heavy. Black is the first. All else came from black. Black is the daddy of everybody. Since we were first, everything under our feet and over our heads belongs to us. Then once we find out that it's ours, we want to know how can we get it back. All right. Nobody wanted to be a Negro. You ran out of the ghetto to the suburbs trying to escape being yourself. But the problems followed us there. You ran to the college trying to get away from self, but your blackness followed you there. You took it with you. We ran everywhere trying to escape self, but let's not try to escape self. Let's be ourselves. But who are we if we are the original man, the first in the light of the sun, the cream of the planet Earth, the God of the universe? Then how can we get that power back? How can we get the knowledge back that it takes to rule as God? We are not left alone. We have a man among us who says, I've been taught from the mouth of God. He said, ask me a question in my sleep and I will wake up and give you the right answer. He says to us, our brains are not capable of formulating a question to ask him that he can't answer. Now you think about that. He said, if you ask me something and I don't have the answer, while you're asking me, God gives me the answer. He has offered $10,000 plus his life. He has offered $100,000 plus his life. If you can prove one word wrong, he has uttered, not in four days, not in four months, but in 40 years, most of us could not stand behind our statements for 40 seconds, not to mention 40 years. But the little humble man you're going to see walk through that door in a few seconds is a man who stood behind his word for 40 years. He tells you to examine it, and you won't find one word wrong, and if you think you can find something wrong, bring it out. Now that's saying something. We never had a man like that before. There's not been one, to my knowledge, on the planet like him before, and I don't expect to see one after him. Praise be to Allah. We are the original. Take your mind off the white man and put it on yourself. You don't need the white man. Many of you said, what will we do without the white man? You did pretty good without him for trillions of years. <laughs> for trillions of years, there were no white people. And I certainly look forward to the day when there will be no more again. Since you've been depending on the spider's web, 
for everything. You must have someone to show us all how to do for ourselves. Where will we find such a man? You're in the right place. Here in Chicago, temple number two, to hear messenger Elijah Muhammad. Not an ordinary black man, an extraordinary black man. Well, I don't care what college or university you have come from. I don't care how many degrees you've got on your wall. You can put all your wisdom together and compared to his, it'll be like the amount of water a bird drinks compared to the ocean. <laughs> Praise is due to our lie at this time. We want to give way to the minister of number two, Minister Yusuf Shah. A beautiful representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We greet you in the name of Allah and in the name of his messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. As-salamu alaykum. All praise is due to Allah. That was Brother Minister Kamal Majid from uh, Muhammad's Temple Number 11, Boston, Massachusetts. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, I'm going to bring before you another minister. For about five minutes, Brother Minister Jeremiah Shabazz from Muhammad's Temple Number 12, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the All-Wise, the True and Living God, the One who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, we thank Allah and thank Allah for giving to us our beloved leader and teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as I greet you, brothers and sisters, with the Muslim greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> beloved brothers and sisters, this is a great day for us because we are now living in a day in time where Almighty God Allah has given to us a real leader, a real guide, and a real teacher. You and I, these so-called American Negroes, have been here in America for over 400 years. And for 400 years, we had been without anyone to lead us. The white man had given to us leaders, but these were mediocre men. They were boys trying to do a man's job. We've had these children long enough, and today we say to you, discard them and come and follow a man that is a man, a real leader and a real teacher, a man that Almighty God Allah has given to you, whose name is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. For Messenger Elijah Muhammad, brothers and sisters, is not a man that the white man has sent to you. In fact, the white man disclaims any relationship with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He claims the other man that he has sent you. He claims Roy Wilkins. He claimed Whitney Young, he claimed Eldridge Cleaver and Stokely Carmichael and all of these others. His star was Martin Luther King and he told you and me to follow him. And we did in our ignorance and in our backwardness. But today, brothers and sisters, we don't have to follow those boys. Today, Almighty God Allah has given to us a man like himself. A man whom Allah himself has taught and has given to him the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to lead all of the 30 million so-called American Negroes. And we say to you, brothers and sisters, that you must get behind Muhammad. Get behind him because he is with you. The only black man in America that is 100% for the black man. The others, touch cut. Brothers and sisters, beloved brothers and sisters, it appears as though the man that you and I have all been expecting today is about to arrive, and we thank Allah for his presence. This is the great moment. Our leader and teacher will be here momentarily. The man that many of you have heard about, have read about, but have never seen. So behold, your eyes shall witness the coming of the man of God, Messenger Elijah Muhammad. We all look forward in great anticipation. I'm nervous and I know you're nervous. This is the time to be nervous. 
and a man who has come from Almighty God Allah himself is about to make his entrance. Brothers and sisters, I know how you feel because I know how I feel. But our leading teacher will be here in a moment. You will witness a black man like your brother. Who was that said I was not a big man? <laughs> I know I'm a big man now, I can't. There are so many of you in here, you have darkened our temple out so that I can hardly see you. That's really something. Oh, yes. You uh, find anybody out there calling me little man. Tell them you go down to that temple. You will find he's not a little man, he's a big man. <laughs> I'm really happy to see you here. Uh, I feel more happier than any today than any day I have been out. You see, I'm, I'm not cheated like that uh, Baptist preacher was in the South. He just kept going to the church to preach to lots of people. He wanted a church to pastor. You know how some of these fellows are about that. So when he would go out, the people would come and they start talking about their Saturday night parties while in the church. And just look it up at him every now and then. And he got tired of that. So last one, he went out, carried his Bible case with him. And he set it up on his uh, Bible stand. He opened it up. He pulled out a quart of whiskey, set it down to his left. And he pulled out a forty-five and put it down to his right. He laid his Bible in between the two. He said, brothers and sisters, my text today is some of these things will move you. <laughs> So you are lucky today that I don't have that to do. <laughs> You're already here. So something has moved you. <laughs> as long as something is moving you, uh, that makes me feel good. But when you go to people and nobody moving, then you're in bad shape. <laughs> We have always here a program in which maybe you don't like too much. It's a program of doing something for self. With millions of us here in America and with millions out of America, we are trying to say to you in words that you're going to have to move. 
that people on the outside is pushing in. And they don't have this kind of weapons. They don't come in talking. They want to come in shooting. And I want to teach you how to get out of the way. <laughs> uh, one place in the Holy Quran, and there, there's another place in the Bible where it says that we have heard of this all ever since our fathers fell asleep. You've been telling us this. Well, God, as the Bible said, don't, do not wish to destroy any of us. He wishes that we come to understanding and believe and accept your own so that he could take you home into your own and not carry you to hell with the devil. He's forced to do that if you don't accept. But if you will accept, he even give you a little time. Hold the works back until you can make up your mind. But the time today has been that uh, you have been given this time very, very long overdue. Uh, if you had not been here, the devil would have been destroyed as soon as his time was up in 1914. But since you were here and you are the one that God is seeking, then the time is delayed because you delayed yourself. So I'm here to tell you today like that last angel. That last angel said, time I'm no it's not. We'll soon know no more. So I'm with him. I can easily bear him witness to that truth. The time that you have known will be no more. They are tired of giving you time. So uh, as I heard my father make some mag imagination on that trumpet, he said, Gabriel will blow a trumpet that it is uh, into parts and that each part measured nine foot, which made the trumpet 27 feet long. He used to preach that fire stuff. Oh, brother, it looked like that uh, you wouldn't hardly be able to get ready. So I'm saying to you, that that trumpet, I don't say nine feet each length of it, but I say this, that the time that you have known will soon know no more. <laughs> These people is getting ready, and I'm trying to hurry you and myself to get ready. Hurry, hurry, lay hold. Beyond. This is what I'm here for. Yes, sir. We have, as you know, our program. It is doing something for yourself. Yes, sir. And that if God will give to you and me the kingdom, we have to learn how to keep up the kingdom. Give a man something and then he don't know how to keep it up. You're wasting time. We must learn how to keep it up. As the Bible teaches us that you're raised up to rebuild the waste city. That's the in your body. So those who will waste the city is the one that we want to stay out of the way of because they will be causing trouble. I'm looking for cable people to help me 
to put this job over and put it over at once. So I find here Mr. Percy Coggins, a medical doctor. Well, we be sick sometime, brother, don't worry. You have something to do. Because we are not in our own and we are not acting ourselves. Mr. Patrick Coggins. A deputy, I, well, we have some people around here that gets out of their places sometimes. I don't know what kind of deputy you are. But however, Mr. Coggins, if uh, you are one of those that picks up people who is not in their right orbit, we need you. And Mr. Patrick, Admin deputy administrator and legal consultant. Thank you for visiting us. These are the kind of people we're looking for. And also Dr. Houston X. Kelly, medical doctor. We need you doctors. Don't you hear my voice kind of bad? Dr. Joseph Smith, he's a doctor. Mr. Earl T. Better, teacher. If I mispronounce your names, were just like for me, I got to school and they was closing. Many of them. Brassil, Brassil, uh, M. Brassi, M. Jones, manager, traveling agent, HFC. I like you too, because we travel a lot. <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth, some of our people had never left the community that they was born in. Islam went and moved them up. They are traveling. This one will certainly put you on the road. Yes, Dr. E. T. Johnson. Surgery. Oh, no, I don't want you. No surgery, brother. No, no. I need all of my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cedric. Ex Clark, professor. We need you to use a professor. We not one ourselves. Charles 19 X James, teacher. Carl 4 X Morris, engineer. I should have you standing, shouldn't I? Every time I call your name, so we'll know who to call on. So that a fellow don't beat you out of the job when we call. You know? That is right. These are doctors. We always need a doctor sometime. Charles 19X, James, teacher. We need plenty of teachers. May you stand. Let's see how you look. Where are you? Yes. Yeah. The uh, secretary said, probably the brother is in the school section. Carl 4XM Morris, engineer. He may be in this. Yes. Well, some of them is out, brother. I don't get a hold of them. Excuse my delay here. I 
I don't know what I'm going to call this one. Name or not, I didn't go to school, I told you. Is this brother Octavius? Octavius. Octavius. Director of the Roxbury Medical Techno Institution. Are you here? It is. Okay. Ms. Cor- Corina H. Al- Aline, registered nurse. Are you here? Well, we need nurses. I need one right now. <laughs> All the way in the back. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sister. Mrs. Lucille M. Holland, administrator and assistant. Mrs. Lucille. Sir. I brought a Lucille here with me. (laughs) And she was a nurse. Thank you, sister. Or rather, she is a nurse. No, that is not a nurse that I brought here. Ooh, look at the nurses here. Mrs. Uh, Tara Richard, nurse. You, Mrs. Richard? Thank you. Mrs. Dolores. No, wait a minute. Mrs. Audrey. You call off these because you went to school more than I did. So you call them off. Uh, Mrs. Audrey Arrington, a nurse from Detroit. Yes, she is. Yes, sir. Right there, sir. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Miss Melinda Robinson, a nurse from Detroit. Yes, she is. Yes, sir. She's here. Uh, Mr. Garland, a con- uh, contractor from San Francisco. Here he is, He's right here. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Yes. Corrine Elaine, I believe it is, registered nurse. Oh, yes, sir, she's in the back. She just raised her hand all the way in the back there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I see her. Now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Uh, E.T. Johnson. He's right here, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Cedric uh, X. Clark. He must be in the school also. Um, uh, Mr. Patrick Coggins, a deputy administrator and legal consultant. Mr. Coggins? No, he's not here. Today. No, sir. Mr. M. Forster, electrical contractor. He's right there, sir. He just stood in the back there. Mr. I, uh, I Forster? I was just about to say he should yeah, Mr. not Forster? have missed. <laughs> Since he's a contractor, we have work to do. Yes, sir. Mr. Forster, would you stand, please? <laughs> Uh, yes. Mr. Archie Simpson, electrical contractor. Yes, he's here. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. John Slade, television producer from Boston. Yeah, he's here. Mr. S- uh, Thank you, sir. Mr. Steve Hussein, uh, Black News Television, also from Boston. Mr. Hussein. Mr. Wesley Williams. Black News. Uh, Mr. Lewis Overby, reporter, Christian Science. Mr. Earl X. Bracton, doctoral candidate and teacher. Well, we Do- don't see him. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Kelly. Uh, brother, Dr. Houston A. X. Kelly, sir. Medical doctor from Boston. From Boston. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's up in that corner of the United States. Well, good one comes up. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Percy Coggins, a medical doctor. Mr. Percy Coggins? Don't seem I guess he have a patient in bad weather outside. <laughs> yes, sir. And Mr. Yeah. Joseph Smith, the medical doctor. He's there he is back there, sir, standing in the corner near the near the post. Mr. Smith, would you stand again, please? He's here. Thank you for your presence. 
That was the lesson, sir. Okay. Well, we can say to you that we are real happy to have you present. We want you to know that we need your service, every one of you professional people. We can't come in and say, be well and you will be well. have me a little troubled up. <clears throat> so as soon as I can get myself well, then I will show you how I got well, and then you can start practicing. But I must go through with what all the others went through with. Remember the book. It says there when uh, Job began to complain that when God answered him, he answered him out of the whirlwind. He come to him pretty tough. He asked Job to answer him then. Job was not ready to give answer to what he was asking. Those questions he asked, Job was a question that Job had never been questioned on. Right, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Condemned Job. And the first word he said, Who is this that darkened counsel by reasons of words? Yes, sir. He criticized Job that he was uh, throwing in his little excuses and accusing of the God yes, that he was making the truth become dark. Yes, so he asked him just a few questions and Job ought to know how to have answered those few questions. Yes, he said, what is the foundation in which the earth is was speaking yes, sir. to defend his questions. Yes, sir. Now, Job, if you can answer some of these questions, he didn't say some of them, but these things, uh, well, uh, he didn't, it don't read exactly like I'm saying, but this is what it means. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you can answer my question, Job, your own right arm, your own right hand can save you. Think over that. Just go ahead, Job 9, answer me for a few minutes. Job told him they was too heavy for him. He couldn't answer the question. He ought to have told Job to shut up then. <laughs> But I'm not going to tell you to shut up. I'm going to tell you to talk. Yes, sir. I want you to open up and talk. I don't want you to shut up. Yes, sir. I'm looking for labor. And the day is far spent. Yes, you hear lots of things going on. You heard that the East uh, is now joining up with East. You'll hear that, you read it. Yes, sir. But you don't think it's talking about you and it won't interfere with your big chief. Here in America, he's the big boss. But I said he got the boss sort of rocks around it. And he's got to be a boss to get out of it. Joining up with East. Yes, sir. You'll hear that, you read it. But you don't think it's talking about you and it won't interfere with your big chief? Here in America, he's the big boss. 
But I said he got the boss sort of rocks around it. And he's got to be a boss to get out of it. You notice that the miracle's money is just continuing to fall. You notice that people continue, nations continue to unite on the outside of America. In the book in the Bible, it says that they said, Come, let us go up against her. Noonday. Let us go and take her while she is asleep. This is referring to America. The Asiatic nation is the one talking there. They're about ready to strike. And the country knows this. To be true, I'm not biting my tongue to tell you that. Yeah. They are ready to strike her. The nation of Asia. They're all uniting together against this one. To lay hold on her and lay her low. Yes, sir. Yes. God says to me, my greatest desire is to bring this devil, this what he you, yes, this devil to his knees. Yes. So we being in the midst of all of this great cloud and clouds of war being made up and all of them aim is towards America. I want you to interest yourself and trying to save yourself. Don't think that America is prepared today to keep them from coming in on them. She's not. <coughs> no. She's not able to ward off this type of enemies that is coming against her. They have united all over Asia to focus their guns on America and remove her from the planet Earth. Yes, Not to give her a chance to live somewhere else, but to remove her yes, from the planet Earth. Yes, My friends, I'm telling you the truth from the mouth of God and his prophets. America is gone. She's going. As the Bible teaches you in a symbolic way, it says Babylon is falling. Why is she falling? Because she has become a habitation of devils and a cage for every foul and hateful bird. This is your America. It's there in your Bible prophesying that this country is nothing in the world. It's filled with nothing but devils. Yes, sir. And them that is not devils, maybe that's some of you, full of hatred yes, sir. and tearing foul spirits. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My beloved, I'm here to talk with you on such subject as I'm talking, which means judgment of someone or some country.
this is our country that we are living in. And another place there in uh, Revelation that warns you and me to fly out of her, flee from her, and be not according to her snare. I'm telling you, brothers, this is true. We have before our eyes and been reading it ever since Grandma went around. You better begin to respect it as the truth you are reading. There will be no more some of the the world scientists now. Think over this. Some of the world scientists bearing me witness that uh, this is the truth, that America, see, doubt America will live another three years. Yes. This is devil himself saying that. According to what he has learned, he says, that the Lord said through the mouth of his prophets and apostles, that America will hardly live three more years. I bear him witness. I have not told you this, but I can show it to you in black and white. That in came three years after the death of Muhammad's wife. Maybe you can find it. <laughs> this is in the table talk of Muhammad. And uh, it's also in uh, two or three other places by the scholars of Islam. They have a death pretty well described. I read it years ago. I did not want to never say nothing about it until after her death because of I And uh, she has many children and grandchildren. I didn't want them to know it. But there's much we must tell today that yesterday we did not want to tell. (laughs) We have many things that we would like that you know. Putting it in a man's heart 25 or 30 years ago, these things, I was forced to keep quiet until the time come that we can take many things of truth that we didn't know. I stayed with God three years and near hell. And he taught me night and day. He didn't let me rest. Night and day. Of the the woe of black man, not world of black mankind, but the world of black man. The kind is the devil Caucasian. He is the kind of man. He's mankind, and we are men. He don't mind confessing that he's a mankind. He called himself that. And he will admit it to you. Excuse my slow getting around up here. I 
am to teach you wisdom, divine wisdom. I can't hasten it because that you have never had no such teacher as I. I am a teacher that you don't meet every day. I can go to the doctor's office or to his clinic or to his hospital and he won't know no different hardly from me than he would any other patient. I'm not here to show off. I have been taught how to teach you to get well and stay well. Well, then why don't you do that, Mr. Muhammad? I had to fulfill. The sickness that come to me, I had that to bear anyway. If I had not, then I would not be the man that I am. I have to bear that which others bear when they were here years ago and thousands of years ago. I'm a fulfiller. So therefore I have to take and go through with that which prophets went through thousands of years ago. And yes, all to make it worthless for you to have another prophet. Yes, That's right, you don't need no prophets after me. Yes, no. I bring you face to face with God and the devil. Yes, therefore you don't need no more prophets. I fulfill in your presence that which Moses, Aaron, and Lot, Abraham, before them, I fulfill all of them right in your face. But you don't know these things because you never studied scripture. Therefore, the prophesier of the scripture, you don't know that until I open it up to you. But you will read where that God in the Bible teach you that he would send you one yes, sir. to teach you the scripture. Yes, sir. And in the uh, Holy Quran, it plainly teaches you that uh, God will send you one to teach you the wisdom and the knowledge of these things scriptural. But since you have not been too much of a scripture reader, I'm here to put your mind back in it so that you will find the truth that I'm teaching you. It's there. <coughs> We are so proud these days and time from the teachings of the devil, we don't have time to listen to spiritual teachings. We laugh at that because the devils made us like themselves. He don't care nothing about listening to no truth. He knows he is one that was made without truth. was none put in him. And that uh, when you talk to devil about truth, he laugh and begin to get mournful looking, and he'll soon dismiss himself, because that's not the nature of him to sit and listen to truth. But reach over and get your old banjo and some other musical instrument yes, sir. and start playing and blowing off the blues. You makes him happy. Yeah, he's a happy man then, because you have, you are now given to him, rather I should say, that which by nature he was made yes, sir. to listen to. Not made to listen to truth, no. 
They want to come here, but they know they are not fit to sit here and listen. For the truth says the truth is against himself. <coughs> yes, I have to, brother. Take your time. The Holy Quran is our book. It's a late one. <coughs> so it being late coming to us, and we being late in receiving. Yes, sir. Let me read to you. A verse or two of the opening chapter of the Holy Quran. It goes something like this. In the name of Allah, the beneficent the merciful. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Not one world, but of the world. Yes, sir. You have a F on there. Yes, the beneficent the merciful. Master of the day of requital. He's the master on the judgment day. And it follows up with the witness of the righteous. In these words, Thee do we say, and thee do we beseech for help. If we serve a king, that king is the one to help us. Because we are his servants. Who are we going to serve? And who are we going to look for help? But our master. Guide us on the right path. Who are we going to look to be guided on the right path if we serve him? No one that we can see. The path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors. This is the opening of the Holy Quran. How beautiful. The path of those whom he hath bestowed favors. Not upon, a, upon the path of those upon whom thou hast... No, pardon me, I'm about to get wrong here. Not the path of those whom wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Yes, sir. We don't want no such thing as uh, chastising. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the Holy Quran is a great book. It's a book that the devil can't call a lying book. This is one book he don't dispute. He recognizes it to be a book full of truth. And so he don't argue about it. Most intelligent white people, they have a whole one in the house. Uh, they told me that when I was in prison, uh, a guy was a Muslim shrine, and he told me, he said, why shouldn't they let you have your book, the Holy Quran? He said, I have mine. He said, you a Muslim. He said, they're trying to force you to read the Bible. He said, because I asked uh, the lieutenant. I said, why don't you let him have his holy coin? He said, that's what we got him in here for. So let him read the Bible. And he swore back to him and said, that's a shame. To let him 
be deprived of his holy corn. And, and then your government tell him that he have the freedom of religion. These things is like the Bible prophesied. In that day and time, the truth will be made clear so all can understand. Well, it's becoming so clear today that even they themselves wish that they could join up with the truth. That's me, mostly weak. Could they join? Couldn't some of us join? I tell them no. You say, you, you, you don't mean to say not, none of us right? I say, let me give you an example. I say, there's lots of snakes. I say, some of them is harmless, we call I said, but yet he's a snake. He started laughing. He knew I was after him. <laughs> so it kind of tickled me then. I said, surely there are many white people better than others. He said, but they are white people. <laughs> so, they always is asking me some kind of question. And they all want to know, can't some of us get by? I told them, I give them a description of Egypt, when Moses went out of Egypt, that some of the Egyptians went out with him. I said, this don't mean that every white person is going to be killed on that day. I said, no. I said, if many will survive that day. I said, but he will go back to his arm. I said, like the church people, I said, they're not going to be killed. I said, because Allah told them that they would not. They've been trying to practice Islam, though they are white people. But they tried to practice Islam. They are called Muslims. I said, they are Muslim by their practice. I said, but by nature, he's like you and all the rest. But by his practices, the faith of Islam, God given them a sanctions of time. So he will do you the same if you're able to practice. I said, well, I don't find a fault of it. I said, well, that, don't get it yet. Don't find no fault, but I don't practice it. The uh, book, good book says that uh, if you believe, carry it into practice. A belief that is not practice goes for nothing. And uh, so we get along very well, as long as you know a snake will sting you. Yes, Don't go up playing with it. So I tell you these things. Don't take them for jokes and plays. Just remember at all times he's a snake. Muhammad, that we live in the day of judgment and that we all got to go to our home. What does our home look like? It looks like this. Looks like the earth. And with you in our home. This is your home. You're not going to be taken up in the sky no place. Unless it's in a plane to take you out of trouble to another spot where the trouble is not going on. But you're not going to be uh, uh, taken care of like 
you read there in the Bible that the angel will come from heaven and you've been looking for spirit to come out of the sky. No, not like that. The angels will come from heaven all right enough, but they men and not spooks like you think they are. They are men and that they will come in planes to take you up out of the trouble area and fly you to another peace place. Out in the far Pacific, the Bible prophesies to you that you will be taken to the island far away. They do have places out there they could take care of on permanent, forever. And uh, you may live on some of these islands. I'm not in no hurry. I just want to talk with you. <laughs> there is New Zealand. They have already cried out that they could take all of us. But I don't think you will go to New Zealand right away. You may spread out in that area later on. But I don't think you're going now. I don't think you're going nowhere but here. If the scripture is true, and it is, that the Lord says that it is his own good will to give thee the kingdom. Well, if it's his own good will to give us the kingdom and backs it up by other prophecies by saying he takes the kingdom from whom he pleases and give it to whom he pleases. This is a broad hint that he will take this country and give it to another people. And if he don't do that, he's well able to destroy it and give it to no one. But he's able to take it and give it to whom he pleases. And I saw, or rather he showed me, how he could take the country without Scratching a match. Don't have to take it as far. He has already shown me this. He can take it without lighting a match. Don't have to have no fire. Take it very easy. And you can go around and get it even with Johnny for mistreating you. <laughs> This is true as I'm standing here. Then he shown me how he could, easy he could do so with the punishment he put on some of my followers who was hypocrites. That's good as to say, how, what can he do when he get like that? That's the way he was shown to me. It was natural, it wasn't in no dreams. <coughs> These hypocrites were after me take my life. So they, he let them get to me. Then he got a hold of them. And brother, I don't want him to get a hold of me like that. The Holy One said, it is the worst uh, chastisement. He don't chastise like anyone else. It's the worst. It's the next thing to death. When you get something next to death, brother, you're in bad fix. I saw this. He uh, shown me just how that he will chastise those that will not 
believe and obey. He don't want to kill you. He told me not to do so. Well, you say, well, I can slap you down with one hand. Well, that is right. But uh, you can't slap that which uh, I may desire against you down like that. So, it is a terrible thing. As the Bible teaches, do not fall into the chastisement of God. <coughs> well, Brother Muhammad, I'm getting hungry. Through with this slow marching stuff. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. When are you going to get through with this slow marching stuff? But I am moving along pretty fast. Uh, you professional people, we have all you can do if you would join up with us. One thing I must remind you of, I cannot accept you to wait for me unless you want to be right. If you don't want to be right now, it won't be you working for me. I will be working against you. I want you to know these things, professional people, <coughs> that I am here to lay the foundation for a new world, new government, and we can't follow the old world and its government that we have known. We're going to build a new government. And the government is a government of righteousness. I want you to know that. The hereafter means after the destruction of the wicked and their wicked government. That's what we mean when we say hereafter. And the hereafter is coming soon for America. She is the first to be destroyed because she has mistreated us so terribly wrong until God is tired of waiting on us to make up our minds to leave evil and come over to Russia. As you have it there in the Bible, it goes something like this, that uh, let him that is righteous, be righteous still. Let him be wicked, be wicked still. For I come quickly, says the Lord. You have that. Well, this is the quick time that he's making up his mind to come. He has given us 60 or more years to make up our mind. That's a long time we know people guilty of doing every known no good at all. So you have been given that time from 1914 up until today. And that's a long time. So living around among the wicked and they invented more wicked every hour for you to practice. Yes, he don't let you sleep at night unless he entertains you yes, with nothing but evil and filth. Yes, right. He keeps your mind on filth and evil. Yes, so God is tired, America. 
and says she was the first to bring us here and put us on such condition and now still is not trying to repent for her evil doings as one of the white devil priests told me. He said, I know, he said, I know Muhammad, that we are guilty of these things. Yes, and I wish you to do something about it. Yes, he said, we have treated you all uh, terribly, terribly bad. Yes, well, he was just bearing me witness to what I was charging him with. He wasn't doing this voluntarily. I had hemmed him up, cornered him, forcing him to admit these things. They will admit that I'm teaching you righteousness when you go out there and ask one. He'll tell you who, Muhammad? Yeah, he says, he's teaching you all right. Yeah, but I hope that you remember this. How many of you all are going to believe Muhammad? He may tell you that. He said, but he's right on that. He told me out of his own mouth. He said, Muhammad, isn't it true that uh, your people will not believe anything that you teachers tell them unless we white people, as you call us, the blue-eyed devil. Until we put our stamp of approval on it. Not going to believe anything. And that's true. When you go to college, <coughs> as I've been told, that I have a son, he's over there, he went, uh, tried to put him through every college, sent him to Alazar in Egypt, and he still is a disbeliever. So, he told me, he said, Dad, he said, when you go to these colleges and universities, he said, they make you an infidel. He said, you don't believe like you do. I said, well, son, you know better. I said, believe it or let alone. And he said, oh, Dad, I, I didn't mean that you wasn't right. I said, well, I mean this, son, what I said. That you know, and that now you can take it or leave it. Well, he's teaching school in Tennessee, down there to the devil. Well, Leave a man to what he wants to be. Don't try and force a man to believe in that which he don't want to believe in because you have only a hypocrite. So my beloved listeners and professional people, your profession will help us in yourself too. If it was used in Islam. And since you are here, this is for you to decide. Since you have learned, have the privilege to deal with any Asian people or country, that their money is still valuable. If you want to get in, I will show you how. But I'm afraid if you go with the knowledge you have now, you could be the loser there. I don't get nothing but credit from God for guiding me. I don't want you to give me a penny for right guidance and right teaching. I don't say I wouldn't have. Pardon me, I take that back. I will accept you giving something to help me in the work, but I'm not out here to preach and teach for your money. I'm out here to teach and preach to you how to save your life. We are at the crossroads.
We are at the crossroads. We got to accept or reject. To one or the other. These <clears throat> men coming up here, dressed up in moon, star, these are the people of the hereafter. Now don't think you can get by if it's not in your heart. It's got to be in your heart. Nope, no show off today. And these people is not showing off. They have it in their heart. Their whole entire dress can be single out and spoken with understanding and these few words, freedom, justice, equality. Freedom you have never had a chance to enjoy because you've been with your slave master, depriving you of freedom. And also, justice have never come to you. Equality of nations never come to you. Now it's coming to you. You wear this uniform anywhere on the planet Earth. Among any nation, you're welcome. They will welcome you to come in because they know you was not a fool to put that on. These crescents that you have wrapped around your shoulders and hips, they know you was not a fool for you to wear that. They, they who put it on you talked to what it was. And that's right. I teach you what it is and teach you what it means. And you can go anywhere on the earth and use what I teach you. And they will say, he's teaching you right. <laughs> I'm not going to teach you nothing but right. We have uh, <clears throat> lots of little things we want to get around with you. The time is so near to the end. We can't go through with everything. And I can't get up here and preach like Reverend, you know, uh, <clears throat> bone water or somewhere. I can't do that. I have to take time to teach you. And uh, we have workers that you have not got acquainted with yet. You write your letter in to get to <coughs> join up or register up with we, the Muslim world. Probably you never seen the secretary that received your letter and examine them for correction. Uh, is this the hot thing here? Yes, come here. Come on out. Turn on that, uh, Brother Goldberg, turn it. So, this is Sister Margaret Hussain, the one that you write in for your letter to be okay for passion in the nation of Islam so that you may become a registered Muslim in the nation because you can't get in the nation of Islam like you can in Christianity 
Oh no, it's not that easy. It's a little harder than that. So this is Sister Hussain. She's the one that reads your letter and okay them if they are right. And maybe some of you have never met her. So Sister Hussain, I met her a long time ago and uh, I keep, you know, chastising every night and then when you don't hear from her so often, she's crying. <laughs> well, you know, the Bible says God doesn't take one of us unless he gives us a spanking. So he must chastise us to let us know that he is God. So I want him to chastise me if I'm wrong, <laughs> because I know then he loves me. Have anything to say? You could say something to them. I'd like to say, Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers. Waalaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum, dear sisters and brothers. And I thank Allah for this privilege of meeting you, because we corresponded much, and the work of the messenger is the most important work in the world. And I wish that we would all understand that everything that the messenger does is based on Scripture, because he is a divine messenger, and we are a holy people. So therefore, we must look at the messenger in the light of who he really is and understand our greatness and the work that we are doing for the messenger and the great people that we are to be privileged to have such a messenger as the messenger of Allah. Thank you, Sister Hawking. And uh, if there's anything that uh, you think that you uh, need to tell me that uh, you don't like in her office, why well, you may stand and tell me, and I will try and correct it. That's very nice of you that you don't have no charges against our secretary. So, secretary, we thank you for pleasing and satisfying the people in your office. And uh, we have also other officers here that uh, we could bring before you again and again. But since the time is getting short and that I'm getting hungry, That's right, but I'm getting home. <laughs> we all could think many times before ever that we speak to see whether or not we are speaking the truth. The main thing that uh, we people who are read by the devil himself that we must remember that our foster father was the devil himself and that we have to quit practicing after our foster father and go now to our real father and practice the works of truth. We must remember that we were taken from our home. We didn't really come here. We were taken and brought here against our will and against the will of our Father. But we were not able to resist our capital and preventing them from bringing us here in this part of the world. Remember how the history teach you how many lives we lost on ships, leaping overboard to keep from coming here. Our fathers did not want to come here. 
But they was off against their will. They wanted to return home. But they didn't have a boat to go back on. They didn't have anything to cross the Atlantic. Well, but what they had been brought here. And then this wicked slave master, blue-eyed devil, he had rather dump us overboard, drown us than to bring us back home. Therefore, having us bowing to his will, the will of the devil, to obey him, the balance of our lives, under the whip, under chains, under bullets, run through our brains. Today, we were left here, standing on the shore, after they got off the ship, looking at the ship returning to bring their brothers there. They cried to go back. As the devil tell you and me in his book that the ship was named Jesus. Think over that. Given a slave boat now. That good name. Since you believe in Jesus. Okay, here is your Jesus. That's an awful thing to think of. That he will now tell you that this slave boat, prison house, that he brought you across the water on, that's your Jesus. You could feed him with fine limestone and think that you was giving them cool water. Yes, sir. We can take an innocent person out of his home and bring him into a far-off country, 3,000 or more miles off, nothing but water. Then tell him, I am your master, I am your God. Don't tell me your name is Ali or Muhammad. Your name is Mr. Culpepper. Any kind of name, Mr. Wood, Mr. Burry, Mr. Fish, nothing. Now today, all I have found, the Bible proceeds with his coming with a prophesy. I will go and search there for my people. And when I have found them, I will bring them again. Yes, Sell them again among that pond people and in their own home. Brother, this is beautiful. Yes, sir. One writer says that when he found them, that he goes back and tells his people. And then in the end, he will sell said to the angels of his, go and bring everyone that is called by my name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have created him for my own self, yes, sir. for my own glory. Now today, he is after us, yes, offering us the beautiful name, Muhammad Ali. Those are two great names in this world. Yes, sir. Now we're so proud over being called Mr. Brown, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Culpepper, and if you ask him what the name means, he can't tell you. He don't know what it means. All he knows, white man give it to me. You shouldn't be called it. What? If I'm not named that, what, what am I named? He gets down a sort of crowd. He want to give you words. He may be a doctor in office. Or he may be 
some professor in a school. He'll go to argue with you. Tell them what my name is. Forty years ago, we couldn't hardly tell them that. They're much better now. But forty years ago, they cussed us out. And laugh at Muhammad and Ali. Some funny name. Where do you get those names? Call them funny names. I was here. I was then trying to get them to accept those names. Let me see, do I have a card in my pocket? I'm not too sure to do it. use like that in my pocket to show you what, what a beautiful card that name looked like on it. The devil looked at it and he almost ready to jump as soon as he sees it. No, I don't have it in my pocket today. I should have one. No, that's not. I'm, I mostly have one in one place or another. Sometimes I have it in one so that I can get to it, but I don't think this whole one that I use the carriers to. I ever don't get impatient. I just miss that. Thank you. But you can't go back to your people, nor even in Africa, with the white man's name. Now, many of you say, I go to Africa. But when the checkup day comes, they'll send you back. Because you must have a Muslim name, Islamic people's name, to see the hereafter. You can't go with the white man, please. And Africa will tell you that. No, when the time comes for your separation, you must return to us with the name of Allah. That uh, we all have to go in his name. And uh, the Bible teaches you that. And why should not we leap and jump to get out of the name of an enemy who chained up our fathers and mothers and beat them with the chain after he got them over here. Why shouldn't we be happy? You don't seem to be happy to get out of the devil's name. Why you should then have this temple here almost rocking just to hear them. To get out of the name of an enemy. Who is out there shooting your brothers and sisters every day for nothing? You're walking by like a sheep while the slaughter is slaughtering the other sheep. This sheep going along biting grass. Don't pay any attention. Yes, sir. That's the way we are here. Don't pay any attention. Look out here, these boys that got killed lying there asleep. Like a rabbit is sleeping in his bed, not paying no attention to the dog. And here comes the dog eating him up. But a dog won't grab a rabbit when he's lying sleeping in his bed. He'll make a noise to make him jump up. Because I have hunted with dogs after rabbits in the south. And that uh, rabbit dog of mine, he'd go up there and he'd catch a rabbit squatting down in his bed on the little grass and with his ears lying down on his back, neck. The dog won't jump right on him like that. He'd take his feet and pat the grass and make a little noise. And the rabbit jump up and he run. Then he takes out after him. He give him a chance for his life. But look what these devils did for these boys out there. Men lying there asleep. He wouldn't wake him. He sent a blast of bullets in the man while he was sleeping. He had it anyway. Why didn't he just tell him? Well, I got your cover. You want to take it without fighting? That would have been just, but he was such a coward, scared of it.
story devil blasts the man's life out. He didn't, uh, dead man never saw his enemy. Didn't know what he looked like. He died before he could be wicked. He didn't know what killed him. See what time the people you live among? And that you praise them up and wish you could stay on with them forever? Look what you are doing. I don't say these men uh, would not have gotten killed if we had helped them. But that would have helped us from seeing another thing like that. Why didn't you and your followers then, Mr. Muhammad, take revenge for such? The reason I did not take no part in it because they had asked me out before they got killed. I spoke about them before ever they got into this death killing stuff. They came to my house. When I spoke about them in our paper, he asked me not to write no more about them. He said, just keep your, your paper and don't put us in it. And so I said, okay. And I didn't even t until today. So God told me to let them go ahead and do it. And I let them and they about wiped out. I knew this group was coming, so I went on and I taken myself in my house and put my mouth in my own paper and said nothing about this. Because they didn't appreciate it. They don't appreciate it even today. But tomorrow they will. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, some of our people are so dumb that God himself can't help them. That's right. They are so dumb to the knowledge of good that they won't accept God because they don't know God. And they consider God is just something that will talk. But they will soon know it's coming to pass. And I say to you, O oh brothers, fly to Allah for refuge in this day and time. It's awful the thing I see coming. Think over storms and earthquakes, cold weather, that the scientists keep telling you it's on the way. It's over here in such and such state. It's all. Yes, sir. Cold. It's going to be so terrific here yeah, one of these days that you can hardly breathe for well, death walking down your nostrils. Freezing your lungs up and your breathing tubes to your lungs. This is on its way to America. And that uh, you will find heat from the sun that will be so terrific that you can't breathe it that you'll be running, seeking hiding places to find a cool breeze. That's on its way. As sure as I stand before you, these things are bound to hit America. Earth quicks are a thing is terrible. Because it don't give you no place for refuge. Shaking on your feet and you don't know when it's going to make a crevice, that will drop you a mile deep into the earth. 
It can open his mouth and swallow you up, says the Holy Quran. And I say to you, my beloved, that day is closer for these things than you really think. I would not have been risen up in your midst to warn you of these things if they was not coming to pass. Uh, soon. There is no other messenger or prophet coming after me. I'm the last one of those people. No more after me. No whiner will ever come after me. The only whiner that will come after me is that one that you read there in the Bible that the book says he went and placed one foot on the sea and one on dry land. And he lifted up a trumpet. And his words was, I will be the time that you know it, I will soon know no more. And that man will have his foot in those positions because he's going to cut a short and grab it. So Allah taught me. We had read it, but we didn't know how he was going to bring it about. He said, away he will do, he'll cut a shortage and to grab it, tear like a shortage at them, these electric wires here, and they blow off. And that when he do that, all the air over land will burst in a flame of fire. And uh, the water, there will be no burst of flames over it, but over the land. And that these flames will leap up into space 12 miles. They'll be that high. Nothing but a flame of fire. Burning the atmosphere, all the atmosphere that we breathe now will become a flame of fire. So these things is now pointing at our home here in America. You see, this is the only part of the earth that Father likes to cover. The other part of the earth will not be covered with fire. And that uh, it will burn, he said, for 390 years. This part of the earth, us, up out, will burn 390 years. Nobody will be able to stay here or come here with a flame of fire cutting through with atmosphere 12,000 miles. You must remember. That's a terrific flame of fire. No, not 12,000, pardon me. Well, but that'll clean us up. After you get 12 miles up into space, you don't have no good air to breathe. You have to close you in. Something in give you oxygen. So my beloved brothers and sisters, who that have been listening to the truth of the judgment, I want you to get ready now, not to wait like the people of Lot, people of of uh, Noah. Don't wait for the last minute, because they nobody love us but God. They don't want us. We are too ignorant and. Disgraceful of self and others. They don't want it. Nobody wanted us. He said to me, but himself. It was him, the one that wanted us. He said, if 
it had been left with them. He said, the other scientists would not give no chance for this devil at all. He said, they would have killed him as soon as his time was up because that they had been waiting for the time. He said they was ready. He said some of the boys, young men, teenagers and whatnot, said they go around in circles singing a song. Take me, take me to North America. Take me, take me to North America. Land me on this shore of Tennessee. I promise my Allah I will not return until I push the devils in the hells. I thank you. That's how much they love you. They love you in me. And they hate the devil for mistreating us. I sit in Syria now, oh, once I was there, leaving, and I was talking to the devil. No, pardon me, I wasn't talking to the devil, I was talking to a Muslim. That was half one of the apple. He and his father, on the other hand, and he told me, he said, Mr. Muhammad, no, Brother Muhammad, he said, we know everything that goes on among you and your people over there. He says, if I just had the chance to go to America so I could fight for you all till I die, he said, I wouldn't want to come back here. He said, I'd just like to go there and just fight for you all. And he was crying when he said that. Think about people love you and you don't love them. That they would come and fight to the death to save you and me. Just think over these things. And that you, when you see one, you laugh at him. And his heart full of love for you. But they know they cannot talk to you. So it'll make sense. Because you don't know yourself and them either. Right. So, I saw the man and my son Herbert and my son Akbar looking at that man crying over us. He's sitting in his own airport. These style of homes is a style that uh, the architect is building for me over there in front of my house. I choose them from residents that I found there in Damascus. And I told him I wanted some. But he have added so they're even better and more beautiful. They love you and me. This architect, he's trying to build me some of the finest homes that the Western Hemisphere ever saw built. <laughs> well, that's the truth. You ask any white man, he said he never saw no houses like them in the West. Well, Allah says money, good homes. Those are good homes over there. Good home. Each one cost them four hundred or more thousand dollars. That's a that's a mighty home. That's a mighty home. And the one on the corner is costing one million dollars.
So this fulfilled what he promised. He says money, good home, friendship. Well, I'm having that. I have friendship in you. And the houses is coming up from Allah. You can't say you're not my friend because I'm your friend and Allah sealed the friendship with his love. We want to, and we're going to build from 78th Street all the way down to 87th Street. We're going to make you a beautiful south side. It's all drawn out. One of our building engineer brothers have taken it up to begin the first one here in 7800 block. He's a building engineer of ours who have a great record of doing good building, or build good building. So we're going to let him build all for us if his skill in building is what he said. So soon you will see your brother there digging. Well, he said he, he's moving up his machinery now. We don't talk and talk and talk like Christian people. <laughs> What? Christian people talk and do nothing. We talk and we work to accomplish what we desire. And this is going to affect there. The man have already moved up some of his machines. You will see your black brother going in to the ground then this coming week. I was so glad to meet the brother, I didn't know what to do. I love for you to help me, but don't say you're going to help me and not able to do it. You say you're putting us behind like that. I know the devil. You come to him for material, he'll ask you, where you carrying it? Where you building it? And if you say for Elijah Muhammad over on Cottage Grove, he may not like it. I know I don't have anything. And if I had it, I wouldn't sell it to you for him. To break our friendship. But it happened, some of them don't mind. Because they know if Elijah is building that kind of building, you're enriching our city. That's what they know. So down at the city hall, they have great respect for me because I'm doing something to make the city look so much better. He must be hungry. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he said he is. He come and told me the time. So I told him he must be hungry. So he said, yes, sir. <laughs> but you must remember, these is hungry for truth. So, professors, this is what I want you to help me in. Help us to build a site, the south site, 
up for ourselves. So we have a little taste of heaven. Yes, sir. Like the north side have for themselves. Let us make our people to be respected here on the south side. Yes, sir. Take the woman in at night. Don't leave out here for sure for yourself and strangers. Take and run in home. Not right now, I will tell you. Make it in trouble, even with the husband. My wife stay out long as she wants to. You got nothing to do with her coming in, nigger. That's the way they will talk to you. So you wait till I tell you. When I tell you, you can do it. Thank you. You won't have to run her in if she keep coming here. She'll go in herself. She don't want to be out here where she's insulted. And then she'll make fun of you. What kind of husband do I have? Don't try to protect his wife. I know women. They'll make fun of you if you can't protect them. So, let's fix her up so that she even be shamed to come out at night walking around in the streets among insulting people. We must get up from out of this savage caves that we're in here in America. We must get up out of that stuff if we want to be respected as equal human beings on the face of the earth. Who wants you in their homes? Who wants you in their cities? They're not going to let you disgrace them. Over in Asia I have been to cities. They wouldn't let your wife walk about at night in the street. She have to go in. She might change some brother's mind. So the policeman will run you in. I'll put you in jail. So this is what we need. Then we can look at our wives and be happy that they are our wives and not somebody else's sweetheart. Join me and help me to put the nation on top. This is all we need. We need to get up out of the human filth that we're in push ourselves up and pull up the others. This is what we need. Our women is not as hard to make clean and truthful brother if we go after them right. right. Don't go after them with sticks and guns and knives. They will obey you when they see that they have a husband that is upright, clean, and want them to be clean, they will voluntarily come on in with you. Because they will soon see you get is getting respect and they are not. I'm going to see if I can't find something else to say. I thought she was going to say, ooh. <laughs> you know a person having the access to the same thing daily, when you bring him some more of it, it is not in a way, you know, nothing new. And therefore, he said, mm, I've been hearing this all the while. So this is the way the old Muslims are here. They will say, mm, 
But the new Muslims said, yes. That's right. That's because the old one been listening at us a long time. But they will tell you quickly that I have enjoyed listening at it. That's why they can't keep me away from here. That's what I learned here. It makes me happy outside and easy to get along and that with the world. And then I start teaching others of the world that has not learned what you have taught me, Muhammad. And then I feel like I ought to just stay out here and teach my people. <laughs> Oh, now let me see, do we have, do we have any other labels that, that I should present to the people before we dismiss them, so they will know you? Come on, sisters, come on, don't be ashamed.